Concrescence, the process through which seemingly dissimilar phenomena are integrated into a coherent whole. All of the technologies that we think of as the modern uh, internet and the personal computers were really created uh, first uh, in, a, in an area around Stanford University between 1960 and 1975. At the same time that there was both um, a vibrant counterculture uh, and ideas about uh, augmenting human intelligence, augmenting the human mind, were being pursued both by the technologists and they were sort of alive in a lot of the counterculture community that was, that was uh, taking place around Stanford. The technology didn't emerge in the vacuum. Technology is actually mediated by things that are going on in society, whether they be politics or economics or, or culture. In 1965, 1966, there were two men on either side of the Stanford campus. One was John McCarthy and one was Doug Engelbart. McCarthy was leading a research group that wanted to replace the human mind. Uh, he was uh, exploring these technologies called artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence at that time, the researchers thought that they could create a computerized artificial intelligence in a decade. On the other side of the campus, Engelbart was, uh, was doing something different. He was trying to augment the human mind. He was trying to build a set of technologies that would, um, that would al al allow you know, humans to cooperate more quickly and, and invent things more efficiently. I've really struggled to try to understand what the relationship is between the use of psychedelic drugs by a small community of people during the 60s and the development of computer technology. And I'm, I'm still uncomfortable by saying one led to the other. It's clear to me, however, that they both emerged at the same time and there were aspects of each that resonated. Doug Engelbart had this idea about amplifying the human mind. The people who were exploring LSD during the 1960s wanted to expand the human mind. Those were very similar uh, ideas and the impetus was, was related. And they resonated back and forth. Um, and I think it's possible to say that, that each side drew on the other for sort of vision and inspiration. The threads that were emerging in California on the edge of the United States in the 60s led to both, and I think it's not a coincidence. They both happened, uh, you know, within the space of five miles. The interesting thing about Engelbart is that he was willing to experiment with all kinds of ideas, um, from psychodrama to psychedelic drugs, uh, to uh, new, tech, new, new computer technologies, uh, to uh, ideas that were taken from Mao's Red Guards. And so it was a wild and unusual time. I mean, if you went into SRI back in the 60s, um, on one floor you'd have these guys with white shirts and pocket protectors who were designing smart missiles. And on Engelbart's floors you'd have, uh, you know, oriental rugs and pillows and uh, yoga workstations and uh, you know, wine and, and drugs in the, in the refrigerator. It's just a very different cultural atmosphere. And out of that um, uh, came most of the important ideas that would become personal computing. In uh, 1968, in December, Engelbart sort of brought everything that his research group had developed during the 60s together in one just amazing demonstration uh, that was given at Brooks Hall at the Joint Fall Computer Conference. Uh, and uh, he had a huge screen, uh, a video screen, which was very unusual at that point to, to have um, an interactive video screen. And he sat up on stage and he had a mouse in one hand, a keyboard. Um, he had a display for himself. He had this thing called a chord key set that allowed him to enter uh, textual information with his left hand while he was mousing with his right. And on the screen he had windows and hypertext and uh, all the visual stuff that would become sort of the modern computer interface. And you have to remember that at that time, um, computing was uh, not interactive. You would take your, your stack of cards and you would hand them to the sort of high priest of the data center. And Engelbart blew all that up. He showed a thousand of the best computer scientists in the country a very different model of computing. Um, and everything was different after that demonstration. It was called the mother of all demos. Uh, and 
What's significant is that um, a lot of his ideas emerged not just from sort of a pure uh, set of a technology events, but from this, this real sort of open ex uh, exploratory group that he put together in the midst of uh, both a political and uh, um, a drug counterculture. ecological uh, crisis is taking place and that global, uh, more global consciousness is taking place and that um, you know, psychedelic uh, awakening is taking place and feminism, all these things are happening. One other thing takes place and that is the first view of the earth from outside the earth beyond its atmosphere and some human beings who represent in a sense all human beings have been in a position of being able to look back on the earth and then photographs have been brought back, which we've, we've all seen. A, a perspective is given that was simply impossible before. In the 60s, we were born. We got off the planet, and we saw ourselves as a living body. We had the Beatles music. We had the substances that expanded our consciousness. We had the awakening of the women, and we had the environmental movement. All of this late 60s, early 70s and we began to realize that we're overpopulating and polluting we didn't even know that until around the 60s we're learning we have to coordinate as a planetary body we didn't have to do that before we were all separate medicine any mediation necessary to correct a diseased state of being. Obviously, Americans are least of any people in the world afraid of drugs.